Saffron Burroughs is a striking presence in The Guitar, the first feature film by director Amy Redford. This is Eric from Cuporet with a video report from the Hamptons Film Festival, where I had a chance to sit down with Amy for a conversation about her film. I asked her how she came to make the film. A friend of mine introduced me to the writer Amos Poe, um, thinking that I would be good to play the lead in his film, The Guitar. Um, and I met Amos, and I heard the story that uh, inspired the script, and it was haunting to me. And I took the script home and digested it, and uh, I kept firing myself in the lead role and hiring other actors in my head. So I knew I didn't want to be in the story. I really wanted to tell the story. Um, so then Amos and I started talking, and he had already given it to somebody else to option, so I knew he was willing to hand his baby over. And I thought, why not hand it over to me? Um, and he liked my take on it and where I wanted to go. Uh, so that was sort of the beginning of the journey. The film is rather stylized, she'd say metaphorical, not to be taken absolutely literally. It is front-loaded. In the first few minutes of the film, Melody is fired from her job, dumped by her boyfriend, and learns she has terminal cancer with just a month or so to live. On the sort of metaphorical level, um, I think it was asking you to examine the life that you are living and whether or not it's uh, an an examined life, if you're inhabiting your life in the way that you could be. Um, and it's it's sort of, you know, the sickness in the film could be something that is a metaphor for a crossroads or you've hit a wall or, you know, you no longer know how to grow um, or listen. And it f and the events of the film f pushes the envelope and asks this this character to re-examine everything that she thinks she is, and so to me personally, um, that really resonated uh, at that time in my life. And um, and on a more sort of literal level, uh, having been around people that have struggled with illness, um, it does make you reevaluate your uh, priorities and your values and how you um, go out, you know, is, is, is really about how, how do you do it on your own terms. It's not the same for everybody, but how can you take some of the power back to yourself and, and have as positive an experience as you can in whatever days you have left. Um, so it, all of these elements of the film... Um, plus the element of music and rock and roll, which, you know, is a, a, a powerful conduit for many things. There have been several films recently with similar starting points. The Bucket List and The Last Holiday come to mind. I asked Amy what is unique about her film. It's a sort of a hard question to answer because it was... Uh, this is pretty pared down. Um, there isn't a lot of devices that I'm using in this film to... Um, it, it's very much her own experience. It's not um, as much of how the world helps her go through it. It's how she kind of invites certain things to her and what she does with them. So um, I suppose it's, it's more intimate and probably a lot more quiet. Um, I think it's it's right for that character at that time. I'm not. It's not a prescription. The film isn't a prescription for people, um, but based on who she was, how she grew up, the kinds of fantasies she had as a child, this this was how she could resolve her issues. This is how she could figure out her happiness. Uh, and I hope that what it makes people f wonder and examine is what is that prescription for them? What is it for them? Is it traveling around the world? Is it writing a book? Is it you know, reconnecting with somebody that you've lost touch with. Um, uh, I think the journey that she goes on is admirable because it's courageous. Um, I, I love her because I, I sort of helped create her. Um, and I'm scared for her and I'm, you know, sort of parental about it, I guess. Uh, and I love, I love that she 
knew how to find pleasure in solitude and that the music that she creates is the music inside and that she uh, doesn't need to be validated by proxy and um, and she has a kind of solitary rebirth and I think that's wonderful because it means that it's possible to do without other people um, you know stimulating it or or, or, um, or having to witness it that you know once you find that kind of happiness on your own you can really go and do anything I mentioned that the film is stylized it is beautifully and inventively shot by Bobby Bukowski although most of the action takes place in one large loft it never feels confined Bukowski deserves attention at awards time I asked Amy about the style and the cinematographer. Um, well, Bobby Bukowski, who's my DP, is, uh, is a really innovative guy, and I've watched his films before we started working together. And I loved it because he's willing to be very subjective in terms of the point of view. And we talked a lot about that, and it's, it was intensely important for the beginning of the film that we sort of uh, start out inside of her experience and inside of her head. And, um, and that when we go into the doctor's office, as the way that I talked about it with Bobby, is that you lose, your reality becomes distorted. When somebody's telling you really bad news, in some way, you sort of leave your body. And, you know, that's why it's good to have somebody else there with you so that they can filter information. Um, and so a lot of that... The, the style we chose was reflecting her experience and her point of view, how she sees the world, how she hears the world, point of audio, point of, you know, uh, the visual um, point of view. And, uh, and so as she starts to evolve, so does the camera and so does the universe. And so the color starts to come in and then sound starts to come in in a different way and there's a little bit more warmth. And um, so what the goal was is to create a slightly heightened reality something that isn't necessarily feel just kitchen sink realism but it's not so stylized that you can't put yourself in her shoes so it was a sort of a tricky balance but um i think bobby did wonderful work and it was really like a a dance with him and with the three of us there is one very special shot Melody is silhouetted, sitting on a windowsill with her guitar. I asked, who set up the shot? God. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, you know, really, we, we were, you know, fussing around, changing scenes, you know, and all of a sudden it was like, oh, you know, the, the, what we saw outside, and I don't remember if it was... Bobby or Saffron or me or I can't remember who it was like oh my god look at the look at the window and we dragged Bobby over there and she was totally in the wrong clothes and half in hair and makeup and you know and just planted her there so I think it's just about you know uh, making sure you're awake when opportunity presents itself I recently wrote a theatrical script in which the central character is a woman trying to figure out how to present sex in a play the guitar has several scenes with nudity and sex, and I was very interested in Amy's approach as a director to shooting such scenes. Well, I can tell you how I do something like that. Um, unfortunately, it's not necessarily the norm. I mean, I, I, I have felt exploited before on film, and it's not a nice feeling. Um, I think what a lot of people try to do is trick actors into doing things they don't want to do. Um, my philosophy is empower the actor to make choices so that when we get there, they're in their skin and they feel comfortable. Um, Saffron and I had a deal. I said, I will not show anything that you don't know I'm showing, and I will give you the option after we're shooting and after I'm, you know, when I'm editing to come into the studio, and if there's anything there that you don't like, I'll cut it. And that was our deal. Um, and I, and I kept it. I kept the promise. Um, and I think what that ends up doing is that it creates an environment where you're free and you can do things that, you know, you can have moments that you would probably try to protect yourself from if you didn't know 
what the deal was. Um, and Bobby Bukowski and I and Saffron sat and talked about uh, the stuff before we started shooting. And um, and also, as, as Bobby astutely uh, talked about, was uh, avoiding the male gaze that um, so often nudity in film is about voyeurism and not about just a kind of, um, uh, you know, nakedness of, of the soul, I guess. It sounds awfully lofty. But um, so we shot her uh, more as somebody who is evolving than somebody that's just taking their clothes off. Um, but a lot of it is just to really have an honest discussion about it because I think if an actor is comfortable, they're going to bring more colors to the table than when they're shut down or when they're fearful or mis mistrusting. Um, and I don't, you know, for me personally, I don't want to be party to that. I mean, it's easy, you know, you can, you can mess around, you can switch lenses without people knowing, you can, um, but that's a kind of darkness I don't want to partake in. So, um, and then most of what ended up happening was because I shot chronologically and the nudity comes in the first part of the, the loft stuff, um, I could have a closed set. So it was really just, you know, sound, ha hair and makeup, um, me and Bobby and, you know, maybe one or two other people. Um, and it was, you know, created a real uh, intimacy. And I liked it so much that basically for the rest of the shoot, I was like, she's naked, everybody go away, whether she was or not. So, um. Amy is a first-time feature director. She's the daughter of Robert Redford and Lola von Wagenen. I asked about how she learned the technical aspects of filmmaking and what role her family played in her life. I've always been very curious about the technical elements of filmmaking, and I'm always talking to the DPs of uh, movies that I've been in and TV shows that I've been in. And um, I came from a photographic background. I was trying to decide whether or not to be a photographer um, to study acting, and I decided to keep photography as my hobby, so nobody got to tell me how to do it and when to do it. Um, so I knew some stuff. Um, best piece of acting advice I ever got was from a sound man on my first film. Um, and I was trying to figure out, because I do theater, how much to project my voice. And he said, imagine that the camera has ears, and if it's the camera's far away, then um, you have to, you can, you know, project more with your voice. And if it's up close, you just, you know, like you're at a dinner table. Um, and I was like, oh, well, that's acting. That's what I need to know in terms of acting, that, you know, I can afford to be more expressive if the camera is far away, but if it's close up, then I have to sort of um, be a little bit more intellectual. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think that I, I've tried to connect to that part of it for a long time. Um, and then just ask questions, you know. There's no shame in asking people things that you don't know. It's when you pretend that you know them that people get frustrated. Um, and I was able to talk uh, sort of conceptually with Bobby in a way that um, he could translate. That's one of the reasons why we work together. Um, and before I made the movie, I just took a lot of people out to dinner and pumped them full of questions, <laughs> you know. Um, well, I come from a family who believes in uh, working hard at what you love. And it could have been a number of things that I ended up doing. Um, it happened to be acting, uh, entertainment, filmmaking. Um, and of course, growing up and seeing the kind of work my dad did and the kind of people that he worked with and that sort of, you know, circus freak existence, um, I loved because it's imaginative and the characters that are involved are so full of life and, uh, you know, some of the most influential people to me were the, you know, Sundance Summer Theater actors who came out with sparkles on their face and false eyelashes and would dance and sing in the middle of the snowstorm, you know, freak snowstorms in June. Um, uh, and my family, uh, both of my parents, um, I think, you know, want me to pursue something that's ultimately going to make me happy. Um, and so that could have been any, you know, what I... I said about my mother is that she wanted me to be a lawyer because she thought I argued very efficiently. Many thanks to Amy for this conversation.
For more stories about the Hamptons Film Festival, the New York Film Festival, and many other interesting things, please check us out at Cuport. Quick previews of random interesting things. For links to more information about the guitar, visit us at Cuport and check the post entitled The Guitar and Amy Redford, posted on Friday, November 7, 2008. Visit us at Cuport often. Browse, subscribe, post a comment. Hope to see and hear from you there soon.